Over the last four months, we were working with Mark Morris Dance Group and Dancing with Parkinson's on a dance project. The dance included um, all of the people who are working together, and it turned out really great. What I say is not that everyone is a dancer, but that everyone who's dancing is a dancer. I also say that my work isn't for everyone, it's for anyone. Someone once told me that the way you dance is the way you show who you are. Whenever I like hear a song, I just want to dance with it. It makes me feel happy and joyful. Dancing kind of makes me feel like kind of happy because I just kind of like to dance sometimes in my house. It calms you down, it relaxes you sometimes, and really you can dance sad, happy, mad, angry, anything. It's just really cool. Even if we are old and cranky or creaky and all the rest of it, that music can give us back that joyful, childish exuberance. I think it opens up the individual, the person. You become more open in yourself. I think the dancing allows us to express ourselves as a whole person, as a full person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As somebody who is expressive and emotional and physical. Children dance before they know they're not supposed to, right? Before they're embarrassed or before they realize they're not supposed to spin around really fast until they fall down. You know, skipping is more fun than walking. You figure that out yourself when you're like five or something. And it's true. And then that is coached out of people through embarrassment, through social responsibility, through uh, sort of a fake seriousness that people think they have to apply as they grow up. And I'm, I'm against that. When the Mark Morris Dance Group first performed at the Illuminata Festival in 2008, uh, we did some educational outreach with the Dancing with Parkinson's program that had already been established here. And so my colleague John Higginbotham and I taught some community classes as part of that. And that really planted the seed for uh, activities this visit because um, we already had that relationship both with Illuminato and also with the Dancing with Parkinson's group. And so the wonderful education team at Illuminato dreamed up this idea of doing a collaborative project around uh, the piece L'Allegro that would involve not only the Dancing with Parkinson's students, but um, students in, in local public schools. L'Allegro is this dance created by Mark Morris. At first, in the 1600s, it was originally a poem and then a few years later, someone turned it into a song. And then a long time ago, someone made paintings with it. So it's all of these things put together. The piece is actually made up of more than 30 small sections, vignettes, which are individual musical movements, but also individual choreographed ideas. And so uh, the, the poems and the language that Milton wrote come into uh, physicalized being through Mark's choreography, which is influenced also by the painting of William Blake. Blake illustrated one of the editions of John Milton's poetry. So you have all of these layers of, of, of artists and of history coming into play. And it's for, um, one means happy, another means sad, and one means content, which is in the middle of happy and sad. So it's not a story, it's situations. So you're in the city or in the country, it's day or night you're alone or in a group of people, and that's what those poems are about. And so the incredibly evocative music that Handel uh, composed based on those texts is what makes it so perfect to sort of exert, but it's in very small, discrete sections that are standalone. So people of many different skills can learn the rudiments of that kind of construction and that kind of storytelling. Getting ready for this big performance, and then in this big performance, we're gonna dance and convey such beauty. I'm a dancer with the Mark Morris Dance Group. 
and I'm here in Toronto um, helping to set and translate one of Mark Morris's dances, L'Allegro, so Il Penseroso e del Moderato, to two groups of fifth and sixth graders here in Toronto and also um, about 13 Parkinson's dancers. Dance is still very much an oral tradition. It's passed on through word of mouth, through one dancer telling another one what to do, with the aid of a video. Obviously, we do refer to video sometimes. Uta has all of this information. She's like a sponge. She soaks up everything that Mark says and all of the details, and then is so generous with the way that she shares that information, especially with new dancers. I mean, that's one of the things that also makes her a really great teacher for this kind of project, because she has the warmth and the generosity to work with all kinds of people, but also really knows the dance through and through. I don't consider myself being much of a choreographer. And so in a way, this project was perfect. I was, yes, we were teaching Mark's material. And then you get to sort of play with it within the frame of um, the structure that he had choreographed. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Robichaud, and I am the creative director and founder of Dancing with Parkinson's. And I am helping rehearse uh, both school groups, Winchester School and Nelson Mandela Public School, plus the Parkinson's dancers in this great project, L'Allegro. It's really important because all of this began when Sarah Robichaud, who is the founder of Dancing with Parkinson's, came to me to uh, offer her services as a trainer. I needed exercise. That's an important part of Parkinson's treatment. And she had been a professional dancer and choreographer and, uh, and trainer, but she knew nothing about Parkinson's. I gave her some books so she could learn what kind of exercise would work best for me. And she sort of had an epiphany. She had some sort of moment and decided she would devote a major part of her career to helping other people with Parkinson's, given, given uh, movement, more freedom of movement through dance. So this is terrific to see five years later to see how this has grown and expanded and involved so many people. Well, it started with finding difficulty just cutting meat at a meal. And, uh, and I think the medication has sort of relieved some of that. But it's still difficult to do things like turn over in bed. Uh, do up buttons, put on socks. I, I do things more slowly. It used to take me an hour to eat a meal. <laughs> well, the thing about um, people who suffer from Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism in some form, uh, a symptom is you get stalled out. You get, you know, in a certain stage, you sort of rigidify or you, you lose a certain amount of control and you get stuck. People actually get stuck. You know, you see where you sometimes have to give somebody something to step over because they, they can't motivate it. Things get locked up. And they're thinking usually at full speed and sometimes very much slowed down by the, by the disease. And so a dancing experience and a music experience, although in the case of my project, the uh, Dance for PD, it's not clinical. It's not therapeutic. I mean, it's not... A, it's not uh, we're not doctors. And so the benefit comes from people not being uh, scrutinized and examined and tested, but it comes from allowing them as adults to experience the, a, a group of people, again, like I said, touching, holding hands, making eye contact, moving to music. It's sort of a trick to get people re-inhabiting their corporeal existence. I'm actually a child of Holocaust survivors. My parents were refugees. We came, we actually lived in New York. I grew up in New York, till I lived there till I was about 18. And then my family moved to Toronto and I've lived in Toronto since then for most of my life. Yeah, you don't want to be defined as handicapped or people, like I know I, I sometimes, sometimes people will offer to help me with the most menial task. Like I'll just be reaching for a chair and. Well, let me get that for you. And you feel maybe it's because I have gray hair and they think, well, I'm trying to be nice to me because I'm old. I don't know what it is, but I guess in my, my to my mind, I guess I, I, I don't want to be 
thought of as somehow an invalid or something. So I go out of my way to do everything as much as I can for myself. Well, which I can, fortunately, I mean. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's 10 years ago. And since that time, I've been trying to keep myself as mobile and uh, healthy as possible. The first time I came here, just as I walked in the room, it was like a breath of fresh air. You know, just the feeling, the warmth, the support, it just kind of lifted me immediately. And it was fun. I think there's something healing about laughter and fun and also the kindness and compassion um, in which the way people treat us here. You don't feel um, ostracized in any way or you don't feel that you, you can't keep up. Um, there's a unity about sharing a, a struggle and it just makes you feel cared for. Well, dance for me um, really helped me open up and, and be a little more comfortable in my own skin, which is why this specific L'Allegro movement project was so special to me because I saw that happening with a lot of the, the kids and the practicing dancers that I was working with. Um, from the Overture, which is our city improv, we moved to the hunt. So we have our Tree. tree one, tree two, tree three, tree four. We have our groups for the hunt. So everybody together find your tree position as a group, with your group. And holding it, I'm going to say change. And when you change, you morph into a new position. Now change. The hunt. We it have magically turn into this formation. The beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful one and only mountains, and this is where you will be seating. Take a look to your left and your right. Notice your neighbors. Uh, you will have help getting here, remembering where you are, all that stuff. We will be here. We are your support system. I want to see mountains. You have to sh you have to convince me that you are the mountain. You are the rivers. You. This is our outer edge. to be doing the dance standing in place stationary. So they are standing, doing all the gestures, not moving. Our other group, our inside group, raise your hand if you're the inside group. Raise your hand. Winchester will be uh, in between, it'll be a little more spread out than this. Um, half of that group will be standing and dancing in between your chairs. And they know, uh, the same moves, but a little uh, bit more movement. So they actually go down to the floor. So um, here, uh, turning, and then they turn to the floor oh and go down, and then up, <laughs> or around. So they have a little bit more movement there. It's gonna look beautiful, kind of swirling in between all of you guys, going down to the floor of the level. And we've already started practicing I like the mountains dance. It makes me feel like I'm strong. I love mountains and it's really fun and it just like, you know, let out your emotions and it's really interesting. Because we get to go into like different positions and all this cool stuff. And it's my first time going. Yeah, here we go. Walking in. Keep the side of your back. And walk. Good. Three. Four. Five. Good. Really beachy. Good. 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 Um, it's very common. I actually like uh, to call stuff. I don't know where the sign is. 
Complicated because then you have to go like in so many, like for like other dances, you can go in like any like place you want to, but you have like poses and stuff. Mm, I like how the dances like are slow, not like hip hop ish, like you know, like throwing yourself all over the place and stuff. So on Friday, it's a big day. On Friday, we get to meet everyone, we get to meet Nelson Mandela, and we get to meet the Parkinson's dancers. And this is when the magic happens. This is when the whole show starts to fuse together and we see what it's actually going to, going to morph into. So when we come on Friday, it's going to be really exciting. Hi, We're going to have tons of fun. I'm Bruce. Hi, Bruce. I'm Alexa. Alexa. Um, Courtney. We're going to listen very carefully. And there's going to be lots of people in the space. So we have to keep our eyes open and be very attentive. And it'll be lots of fun. And Friday's going to be exciting. And you guys are all prepared. So if you have a chance, think about what we did today and try to remember it. Okay? On the count of three, I want to see everybody's tired, tired sleeping position. One, two, three. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now come out of your sleeping position, shake off. What's going to happen now with your group of people is you are going to make a really nice to meet new people like it was kind of freaky because it's hard meeting new people that you don't really know and it's nice to see them all happy and stuff it's not like they're sad or anything. so i go to the other side we'll say big and big 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 the first meeting it was exciting um i kind of took myself out of it and as a, as an observer just uh, enjoyed watching the children, um, marveled at how well behaved they were, how quiet they were, um, enjoyed seeing their personality shine through, which ones were the shy ones, which ones were the cool ones, watching their interactions with each other, and um, it's um, I, I miss that interaction with um, children of their age um, because I did have quite a bit of interaction when I was working. So it was fun for me. A lot of it I couldn't hear, so I just had to rely on my observations. And uh, it was fun. amazing if this is our start i can't even imagine where our finish is like it, it's going to be unbelievable because this was incredible yeah. <laughs> we want people to be people dancing for other people instead of dancing at somebody and we're the passive uh, recipients i want it to be something that's happening in the room of an audience of the musicians and of the dancers, everyone's occupying the same place and no one is exempt. I was really nervous. I've Felt like barfing. All of your attention is on your fellow dancers. <coughs> Jalen, I need you to stand still. This is how you show them support, and this is also how you let the attention be on the people who are on the stage, right? One, two, three. Shh. Amazing. Three counts, you gotta be in your tableau. If you can't see me, then the audience can't see you. There seemed to have been that sort of the change of focus where everybody realized, okay, we gotta do this together. I think there is a certain collective um, sort of teamwork that comes in. Don't see, we wanna, we wanna end the performance like this. So 
don't feel that nervous because I've been on a lot of shows before. Just as strongly. So reaching up. Okay. And down. One more time. Hug a little bit. More. And then up and down. So up, down. And up, down. All right? Dancers are doing your city improvs. And has everyone learned their two city improvs? It wasn't particularly nerve wracking. I'm old enough that I don't need to worry about that too much. I can make a fool of myself and nobody worries. They say he's just an old fool. First, when, we, when Uta and David came to our class and showed us the routine and we learned the beginning, I thought it was really fun. When and after, when we were doing the dance over and over again, practicing every Wednesdays, every week, I got like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm really tired of it. And then after, after that, when Miss Pearson came to us and told us how important it was, and when we danced with the whole, the, like what everybody, the Parkinson's people and the Winchester group. When we danced to them, I saw the dance really beautiful and, and I had a chance to be in the front and to, like, to be in the front and to dance in the front with Benjamin. I want to say that everything that we have done together this whole year has been beyond phenomenal. It's been phenomenal. You guys are so, so incredible and beautiful and funny and courageous and talented. And you are absolutely going to shine tonight like you shine every single week in class. And I want you, number one, to have fun. At the beginning, I was really excited because I was gonna, it's like a very big thing, but now I'm kind of nervous because there's gonna be a lot of people coming to see us. of times I've had this kind of epiphany where at the end of the class I started catching myself doing something that I didn't think I could really do and yet just the whole shared experience of other people moving around and I think primarily the music it just um, I don't know it just sometimes it does make things possible that were difficult ten minutes before
it's special to see them being who they really are and getting to show that to people. People come in and out of the classroom and they see just such a small piece of who they are, but being with them all day, every day, you realize how amazing they are and how special they are and you get to know them on, on a different level. And to get, for people to get to see that and see what they're capable of was amazing. Uh, that was a Manila Park Public School. And this is really exciting for me. I didn't think I could do it, but everybody is here and <laughs> I'm actually doing it with a different school. So, <laughs> it's incredible. I have actually had a hard time defining the Allegro Movement Project because of how wide and full it is. Um, but I would have to say that it's about the community and that's what I learned in, in all its forms through this project with the intergenerational aspect and the music and Mark's work and giving the op being given the opportunity to perform you know all these things that we wouldn't have had without this one specific performance having this video being made and all these people meeting each other that wouldn't have met each other before i i, I just think that the power of community is is what i what i saw um, with this project and also um that everybody is a dancer if they want to be dance is is for them. It's like the same thing as Soho, like just being on stage and dancing in front of the big crowd of people. We, we are so proud of our little children, they grow Hello. up so fast. I just want to continue dancing and doing the arts. I don't want to stop, it's fun. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.